In this video, we are comparing two popular object storage providers, Wasabi and Backblaze. There is a long-form blog article that accompanies this video with up-to-date price comparisons. A link is in the description below. On my system, I have already installed the server version of our software on a Windows 2022 server and am creating a basic file backup set. You can see in the drop-down, we have all the modules required to back up pretty much anything on your LAN or in the cloud. And I'm using the file system module in this video. Instead of using one of the predefined source selections, I'm selecting my files in the Explorer tool. I'm copying over approximately one gigabyte of small files into my backup folder, so we can see how the backup performs. Backing up small files requires more system resources than just one large file, so it will provide a more realistic comparison in the results. The storage destination window has all the storage connectors pre-configured to connect your backup set to any popular storage service on the planet. The first connector we need is Wasabi. The buckets and keys have already been created at Wasabi, so I'll quickly paste them here and test the connection. This connector allows me to connect to any Wasabi region, so I'm using the regions in the UK and Australia for the speed comparison we'll see later. Now that the London storage location has been added, I'll need to add the storage location in Sydney. Moving on to the Backblaze B2 connection. I'm going to connect to one that is located in Amsterdam, Holland, because that is the closest to the UK. Backblaze doesn't have as many regions as Wasabi, and they don't have one in the UK yet. Although this video compares object storage between Wasabi and Backblaze, I want to add another object storage provider, this time from iDrive. We don't have a dedicated storage connector for iDrive because they're new to us. However, we have a standard S3 connector we can use. We now have all four storage locations plugged into the software and set the backup mode to concurrent. The backup will transfer data to all four locations at the same time. The backup software interrogates every file to understand its composition. Then it chops up each file into manageable chunks and encrypts each chunk before it is uploaded to your storage destination. The encryption password does not get uploaded. This means it is impossible for a third party to read your data if captured during transfer or at rest. The backup takes approximately 3 to 5 minutes to upload the data to all four storage destinations. I'm going to skip through this phase and pause the video when the backup completes. If we compare Wasabi in the UK to Backblaze in Holland, we can see there isn't much difference in upload speed. The difference is approximately one and a half minutes, and that is expected considering we are backing up loads of small files each with their own overhead. Backing up to iDrive in London was a little slower, but nothing to worry about. If we repeat this exercise at different times, we will see different results but no clear winners or losers. The most important thing for us is that every backup destination responds within the expected time frame and without any errors. As all backups run during silent hours, these differences will probably go unnoticed. What happens if we swap the destinations around? The results should be the same because our backup set is transferring data concurrently to all storage destinations. I'm adding another 800 megabytes of data to the backup source and we'll be running the backup again so we can check if shifting the storage destinations around makes any difference. Fast forwarding to the end of the backup, we can see that it took roughly three and a half minutes to transfer the data to the two Wasabi and Backblaze storage destinations. It took just under six minutes to transfer the data to the iDrive storage so swapping the storage locations around has no effect on the backup speeds. 
A quick look at the usage page shows how much data we have stored. The total displays the amount of compressed data in the respective storage destination. Before I finish, I just want to show the restore screen. As you would expect, the restore can use any of the four storage destinations we backed up to. The obvious plus is that my data is still protected if one of the storage destinations fails. Thanks for watching. There is a long form blog article that accompanies this video with up to date price comparisons. A link is in the description below.